Hello there, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a look at that fella, which is the Innis Wheel U2 electric commuter bike. As you can see, nice big battery there. Before I get into the ride and all that sort of thing and actually take it out on the road to show you how it performs, I'll just give you a close look around the bike and point out the features. Yeah, and the link to this bike can be found in the video description and also in the pinned comment. Right then, so first of all, as you can see, it's a very classic design. Um, and I actually like the design. You know, when I was offered this bike by Innis Wheel to feature on this channel, that was the first thing that drew me to it, was the design of it. It's just practical. You know, I've already got a crazy mountain bike. So I just wanted something that would allow me to go to the post office or to the supermarket in comfort and style. And that ticks the boxes. Now rather irritatingly, when I was coming to edit this video, I checked on the website just to make sure that all the information that I had was right and the information on the website's changed. So this is the updated information and according to the Innis Wheel website, this is correct. So the battery in the middle of our picture there is 468 watt hours, which is 13 amp hours. The range is between 30 and 45 miles, depending on how much pedal assist you have on and what sort of terrain you're operating on. The motor, which sits in the middle of the back wheel there, is 500 watts. Maximum speed is 20 miles an hour or 25 kilometers an hour, although that can be increased very easily to 25 miles an hour or 32 kilometers an hour. Wheel size is 26 inches, which is just standard nowadays. Charge time for the battery from flat to full is approximately six hours. The operating temperature of the bike is minus four Fahrenheit to 140 Fahrenheit. So that covers you for pretty much any terrain. Um, and the net weight of the bike, that'll be before you get this basket on the front and before you get any cargo in the back, is approximately 59.5 pounds or roughly 27 kilos to be honest i'm quite glad that i found out that the information i was working on was incorrect because i rambled on terribly when i first attempted to show all the things on the bike now there's no suspension on the back and although this might look like a suspension seat post it isn't that's just a plastic cover not quite sure why that's on there to be honest with you maybe it's just to keep that looking nice and dust free you know now on the front and the back we've got mud guards or as you guys in the US call them fenders and that stops all the muck getting up onto the bike well most of the muck getting up onto the bike as you can see there is areas of muck because I've you know been using it over the last few weeks on the front we've got suspension which looks like it would have about a four inch travel but in reality the travel is probably nearer two inches now when I sit on here on the bike it does sag a little bit i possibly need to tighten it up just because of my weight so it's maybe like a 10 percent sag which is fine it's comfortable like that um there's been a couple of times when i've been coming off curbs that i've bottomed out not seriously but as you can see i've gone right to the limit of the travel on the forks they do work well though but there's not masses of travel disc brakes front and back standard bike pedals which took me a little bit of getting used to because I'm used to those tiny little pedals that you click in with your special boots on my mountain bike. <laughs> but luckily they've got little nobbles on so my feet didn't slip off these. Just off the back wheel here we've got a little kickstand which folds up and then goes down. Just allows the bike to be stood up. And then on the back here we've got a cargo rack. I've actually ordered a bag to go on here about that sort of size that'll go on there with zips on and so on so I can put cargo in there. On the back here we've got a brake light and then on the front underneath this front basket here we've got a reasonably powerful forward facing light which is operated from the handlebars here so that puts the light on
Yeah, again, you might not be able to see just how bright it is, but it's certainly bright enough to light your way in total darkness. And then just under the light switch, we've got a horn. And the horn, strangely, is actually built in to this. There's like a little grid on the back, so you've got a light on the front and a horn on the back. And this is what it sounds like. Which is any amount loud enough to scare anybody out the way. Okay, so looking at this side, we've got a guard which goes over the chain, stops any flowing clothes or you know baggy bottoms to your trousers getting stuck in here or get, stopping your laces getting stuck in there. Moving back, we've got Shimano gear set, and that's a seven gear setup. Uh, where are we? Yeah, so there, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. By pushing that, it drops it down. To your lower gears and by pressing that you can quickly cycle up to your higher gears that's good because when you're going up a hill you can just gradually reduce that as the hill gets steeper get to the top of the hill just go bam 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 and that just drops it all the way down into the top gear and you're away again now this fella on the front is a big basket which was actually an optional extra and it's held on to the front of the bike the four allen bolts that just allows me to carry cargo in the front of the bike and I think it actually adds to the look as well. You know, it looked a little bit uh, incomplete when it first came because it didn't have that thing on the front. And now it, it looks like a useful cargo carrying bike. Nice big seat for an ample rump, which I have. There's a little lever underneath, I'm gonna press that. Seat goes forward and that allows you to lift the battery out. So at the moment, the key is set to on, so power will flow to the bike. That's off. That's lock. If you wanted to just lock it and then remove the key, take it away. And then unlock. And that allows you to take this out. Like so. As you can see, that's a pretty big battery and there's a bit of weight to it as well. It just slides back into there. Then we'll lock it in position so it can't be lifted out. Put it back on and we're away again, back in business. The seat obviously can be adjusted and that is quick release as is the front wheel. Now with this being an electric bike and obviously needing the power to go from here to all the various things that require the power, it has quite a lot of cables but they run quite neatly down through the tube and then wherever they need to go and they've got outdoor connectors as well I pointed this out earlier but on the right hand side of your shifters here we've got a throttle so when you press that you get an instant burst of power to the back wheel from the battery which obviously propels you forward so to switch the bike on just press that you might have to, you know, it's quite difficult to see in the sunlight, but hopefully you can see what's going on there. We've got the remaining battery power, which is six bars out of six, because I've just charged it up. That is the current speed, which can be set for kilometers or miles an hour. That is a running total of how many miles we've done so far. So presently it's on 71 miles. And what will appear here is the amount of assist that we're gonna give the pedals. And that has five levels of assistance. To be honest, I'll just have it set on five. This comes from the manufacturer. It is set to have a maximum speed of only 25 kilometers an hour, which I think is about 20 miles an hour. You can, however, increase that if you wanted to use this in a different country other than the UK, or if you just wanted to have a bit more speed, like I do all the time. Uh, there is a way to do that, uh, it's actually in the manual, which is great because I spent about an hour online searching about how to increase the speed on this and it was actually in the manual, you know, so good on you. <laughs> Simple process, takes maybe 30 seconds and when you do that it'll increase the maximum speed to about 25 miles an hour or approximately 32 kilometres an hour. Miles an hour may sound like absolutely nothing, 
as far as the increase in maximum speed goes, but it does make a difference. It makes a hell of a difference, you know, especially if you're on a flat piece of road and you just sit back, put the throttle on and you can get up to your top speed without any effort whatsoever. Okay, we've got a relatively straight and flat, more or less level, piece of road here. We're going to go along just using the throttle, no pedalling. Now you may have noticed from the speedometer in that last clip, it got up to 19.9 miles an hour and it just stopped. That's as far as it would go. That's obviously just a feature of the speedo because I've been coming down crazy banks going at least, I don't know, 30, 35 miles an hour maybe. And it's still just registered 19.9, even though I have been going faster than that. So. I mean, at the very least, it just demonstrates that on a flat, more or less level piece of road, you don't have to do any work whatsoever if you don't, if you don't want to. <laughs> and with this particular bike is that when I'm going up hills, it's always best just to use the pedal assist, not the throttle. The throttle will give you instant power to the back wheel but it's not enough to take you up a steep bank, even if you're in a lower gear. It's harder work doing it that way than it is just to knock down the gears so you're in first or second or something on a really steep hill and then use the pedal assist to put you forward. Okay, now this bank is generally a killer. When you haven't got an electric bike, I'm gonna knock it right down to first gear because it is very steep. And as I said before, just continue to pedal, pedal assist, it's working beautifully. You can hear the engine, or should I say the motor, a little bit. And even on my mountain bike, going up here, I would be knackered by the time I got to the top. Might not look steep, but this is a damn steep bank. Pedal assist, still working fine. Easy, up at the top. No bother at all. Every time I tend to use the throttle as opposed to the pedal assist is when I'm going out of a junction. Because if, if you don't get out fast enough, and bear in mind this is quite a heavy bike, if you don't get out fast enough, you could be hit by a car. So I tend to just start pedaling and press the throttle straight away, it pushes me over the road as fast as I can go. And also I use it when I've been on quite a long bike ride and I just want to sit back and just go down a straight flat piece of road. So for, really for commuting, which would generally be done on more or less level roads, you know, compared to where I am at the bottom of a valley where every bike ride is uphill, uh, that would be a good choice. I mean, I love it here and I'm at the bottom of a valley. Hills in all directions. If you lived somewhere where it was flat, battery on this would last forever. The last couple of bike rides I did, I did about 21, 22 miles and the battery was still on three bars. And bear in mind, uphill whenever I start a bike ride and when I'm on the flat I'm quite lazy, I'll just sit back and use the throttle. Pedal assist set to five as well. So that's like a worst case scenario and I still had half the battery left. As well show you that now that I've mentioned the battery. That is where you charge the battery. It comes with, it does come with a charging cable, which just runs off the mains power. Straight in there, charges it up. That explanation of all the bike's features was a little bit long, but if I was looking to buy one of these things, that's the information that I'd be looking for. 
explained by somebody who'd actually used the bike. So I make apologies, but at the same time, I make no apologies. <laughs> Now the weight of this bike may be an issue for some people if you're used to really light mountain bikes which I was prior to getting this but you know it's not impossible to lift up and move about. Having said that I will not be lifting this one over any gates or fences like I do with my mountain bike. That thing I just pick it up one hand lift it above my head and you pass it over the fence you know. With, this takes a little bit more effort. But he's wondering how quickly the pedal assist kicks in when you're pedaling. I found that it's pretty much in line with the gear numbers. So for example, if you're in first gear and you start pedaling, for you take one revolution of the pedal. And then by the time you get up to seventh gear, which is your top gear, it can take six or seven revolutions before you feel it propelling you forward. Obviously it may start propelling you forward sooner than that but I think it does it gradually until it gets to a point it doesn't just go BAM and, and hit in you know. Which is why when you're going up a hill as long as you're in the right gear if you just keep pedaling it'll keep propelling you forward. If you stop pedaling get off get back on again you could have depending on the gear you're in you know two three four five six revolutions of the pedal before you feel it pulling you away again. Okay so just an example of what I would do at a junction. As I said before I would generally use the throttle to push me forward. There it goes because that's an instant hit of power. So imagine I was stopped at the lights. Ain't no car gonna catch me at that junction. Of course just throttle power alone will allow you to get up small hills like that one behind me. I'm not sure what the gradient is on that, it's not a particularly long or steep hill but if I didn't feel like pedalling for that short distance I wouldn't have to. I won't pedal at all, I'll just use the throttle see how quickly we get up there. It's difficult to relay on film, but when I was at or near the top of that hill, I could feel the battery power starting to labor a little bit. Set off very well by the time it got to the top of the hill because I wasn't helping out at all by pedaling, uh, it was laboring a little bit. So for the sake of the battery and the battery life, it's always best if you just continue to pedal and just allow the bike to use the pedal assist as such. So I got up there, minimal effort, and I didn't feel as if the motor was straining at all. That's definitely going to be better for your battery life. Now considering the cost, the current cost, should I say, of this bike behind me, which we've been taking a look at in this video, considering that it's approximately, I don't know, somewhere between 12 to 15 times less, than what it cost to build up my high spec mountain bike that's a hell of a difference and when you compare it to other electric bikes available on the likes of Amazon and so on it does seem to have a lot of features in truth this is the first electric bike that I've had so I can't really compare it to any others but I think it it, it doesn't only reach the expectations that I had set for it, it actually surpasses them in many areas. I just find it pleasurable 
to go up hills now because if you were out on a or at least for me anyway if i was out on a i don't know 15 20 25 mile bike ride up and down all over the hills and valleys around reservoirs then i would tend to only remember the parts that were a struggle so even on my really light mountain bike when i'm going up steep hills ah, i'm just praying to get to the top of it i never get off and push but when i get home the only things that i can kind of remember about the ride are the struggles the hardship whereas with this what i realized the first time i went on a decent length ride is that i couldn't even remember going up the hills it was strange because that's totally different from normal bike riding and i guess that's just the perks of having a battery and a motor to drive you forward or at the very least to help you out because let's face it none of us are getting any younger now if you found this video useful check out the links in the video description and in the pinned comment give it a thumbs up please share it wherever you want and i shall see you in the next video thanks for watching and a thanks to innis wheel for sending me the bike i absolutely love it